Under these circumstances, the existing tensions between the Biden administration and Netanyahu, as well as those between American and Israeli Jews, are about to boil over and create a breach that can't be easily fixed. But as gloomy as the forecast for U.S.-Israel relations may currently be, there are, however, three reasons for a degree of optimism. One is that Netanyahu remains in charge in Israel. Though he is cordially despised by Biden and liberal American Jews, he remains a political master whose ability to manipulate and maneuver around his cabinet colleagues will likely prevent Smotrich and Ben Gavir from doing any real damage to the alliance. It's highly unlikely that Netanyahu will let the government pass anything that would do real damage to relations, the diasporas, changing their law of return, whatever the arguments for such moves might be. Second, in the coming weeks, as Netanyahu's government rolls out its plans for judicial reform and acts as it was elected to do to protect Jewish rights and security against an upsurge in terrorism, it will be made clear that none of that is radical or anti-democratic. The third reason is that despite the never-ending excitement about the threat to democracy, the fact remains that this government was democratically elected and is acting to implement the will of the voters. As such, no fair-minded American and despite what you may think, there are quite a few of those left, will be able to accept the lies about Israel embracing fascism, let alone being racist. Still, with so many powerful voices working to convince Americans that Israel is no longer a democratic country, those who wish to help preserve the U.S.-Israel relationship have their work cut out for them.